FT fans, well, I got a WeDo X40. What is it? A 3D printer. Yep, and with dual print heads. So here we go. Here's that overall, and there are the instructions for putting it together. It says install the instructions, install the printer, but it's actually two pieces uh, that you put together. Oh, that. Camera lens covers uh, got in my way there. So, and there it is, all packed in, ready to be pulled out. And I will. the holes on there hmm yeah that's about right wow it stands on its own easily yeah it's kind of foolish of me to keep it standing like that uh, I could have knocked it down over easily <laughs> oh hey here's the accessories yep uh, let's put it over here out of the way Find the stuff we need to bolt this piece on. Mm, lots of wires, a lot of extra stuff. Uh, I ordered some extra things here and there. Ooh, yeah, okay, those are the tools we need. Uh, you can see, and yeah, what's that? Uh, uh, oh, that's uh, a pair of cutters. American made. Wow, nice. Remain. Okay, let's see. I need to find those bolts. Where are they? Ah, there they are. Okay. Okay, uh, some more stuff. Oh, I don't know what that is, actually. Uh, those are the spool holders. There. Okay, uh, I think everything else can go back in for now. Yep, yep, yep. That's just extra wiring. Uh, everything's already pre-wired so uh, I bought some extra wiring because if I needed it later uh, it's gonna cost a lot in shipping so I decided to buy spares to avoid shipping costs if I ever needed something later on that includes this plate it's a uh, let me see oh yeah okay yeah it's the exact uh, duplicate of what I have there, right? Okay, so that's my so I got a spare uh, a plate also. Okay, let's see. Got to find the right Allen wrench or the right screw, actually. Um, I think that's the right one. It's long. There's four of them. No, there's yeah, there's four of them. Uh, wow, the wiring's in the way, um, so I gotta do something about that. Oh, oh, hey, good thing they provided cutters. Yeah, there's a tie rack there that's holding all the wiring together. It needs to be cut anyway. Uh, it was wired, it was tie wrapped for shipping purposes so that it wouldn't be in the way. So I gotta find the holes back there. Hmm, I can sort of feel them. Alright, let's see, ah, okay, let me try, there we go, there we go, I think I got it, I think I got it. I know there's a hole here somewhere. Is it? Oh, well, okay. I just gotta line it up right. A little just here, a little just there. Hmm. What the heck is going on?
going on? I can't seem to find it. It's, uh. Hmm. Come on, get in there. I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. Mm, uh, no. I don't got it. So, in other words, not supposed to be, I think. It's just going in and out real easily. Alright. Does it even have threats? I wonder. Let's, let's, okay, let's, let's look at the bottom here and see. Does it have threads? Uh, yeah. They are threads. You sure it has threads. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, okay. I'm looking, yeah, they're threaded. Let me just look at the instructions here. Okay, let's put it back. Huh. Oh. Do I have it the right? Front to back, back to front. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think I got it right. Yep. Okay, it's supposed to go this way. Alright. I just got to find the right hole. It's lined up with the holes. Maybe I just didn't have it lined up with the holes right. Okay. How well threaded are they? This has to be dead on perfect. So far, so good. I'm going to take it really slow here and put each one slow. Well, it's kind of hard to get your fingers in there and uh, lining up the those, those Allen screws uh, are really difficult, those machine screws. A little bit of cleanup right there. Uh, let's do the other side. Tighten that up a little bit. Make sure you do it slowly. Tighten it, tighten it. Uh, okay. Let's see. Now it's uh, time to put the spool holders on. Uh, they use T-nuts for the spool holders. Uh, I've never used T-nuts before, so this is uh, interesting for me to try to put on. And well, and you got to line it up with the print, uh, uh, not the print head, but where you're going to insert the filament into the feeder so so I'm uh, getting it all set up uh, what happened 
Oh, god darn it. I put it on backwards. It goes the other way. Like I said, I've never used these T nuts before, so I'm trying different things. Uh, first, I tried doing it, just putting in the T nut on the bottom and then trying to line it up, but that didn't work. So there we go. Put it all in there. Let's flip it around. Okay. And then, let's see. There's a couple of T brackets that they provide to be added to the frame and the base. Uh, it requires four screws. Where's the no, hold on? Two, two, yeah, four screws. And it's on each side. So. Okay, now it's time for the wiring. Uh, I, there's nothing on those uh, instructions about wiring. Very interesting. Fortunately, it's very simple connections and they're obvious, so that's all right. Now I'm gonna explain to my son why this is a very good printer. Different. Uh, qualities about it. And the last thing to put on is the camera, which is a Wi-Fi camera. Uh, so let's give that a try. Let's try to figure out how it's supposed to be put on there because it doesn't show any details exactly where or how it's supposed to go under. And I found the screw. It's a very long screw. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, hmm, how does it go on there? What, what, which of the rails is it supposed to go through? Well, the other thing is, that screw is supposed to go into a T-nut, and it's very tight. So, uh, actually, what I ended up doing was putting it in backwards to the way I would expect the T-nut to be used. So, it it's in there, but it's kind of not the best situated uh, way that it could be. But it seems solid enough. Now, since the printer's uh, ooze out plastic there's these little brushes that you can mount to the sides well you really they're really needed to be mounted on the side uh, the holes are a little bit hidden but and it's slightly adjustable up and down so but I'll just put them in and see uh, how it goes and hopefully I got it just about right it does have a hard plastic so that it can it's not only just brushes but a hard plastic that it has to pass over I'm noticing that that uh, the wiring and the, the feeder tube is uh, rubbing up against the belt, and there's a bit of grease uh, all over the place. Hey, 
They put a little too much uh, grease on those rails. The big one there is a USB adapter, which I quickly found out I didn't need to insert into this machine. It just takes the TF card directly. All right, let's turn it on. Well, no, no power. It's plugged in. Hmm, what's going on? Maybe I should read the instructions. What do you think? Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, there's a switch there. 220 or 120 or 220 and 100 volts. It'll set to 220. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. All right, it's time to calibrate this sucker and see. Uh, let's go through the menus. Uh, get it all calibrated. Uh, they say get a sheet of paper. Okay, I can have sheets of paper laying all over the place. I'll get a, what I think is a regular sheet of paper. And you adjust the screw. And it's kind of opposite of what you think it might be. You unscrew it to tighten it and tighten the screw to loosen it. So you do it for all four corners. Oh! Uh, apparently I had that camera in the wrong spot. It, uh... The, the tray uh, ran, knocked it right off. Z offset. Hey, did you hear that click? Uh, the brush and the hard plastic made that noise. I need to adjust it. Hmm. The offset.
Oh, I already did this. The screen's asking me to adjust the center uh, with the virtual keys. There's an up and down arrows that adjust it. Uh, it says 0.1 on there. Filament B. Made in Bing.
There we go. Actually, it's not going. Uh, the gear's turning, but it's not feeding in the the filament. But it wasn't clear to me at that point. There we go. I'm talking about the red filament at this point. There's a. It actually is going. I can actually see it. It's the year now. All right. Uh, now it's time to do a press tint. Press a test print. Uh, it's on the TF card, so I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm not sure what the heck it's supposed to be, it doesn't, there's not one that says test print, um, is it the first one on the list? Probably, but I'm not sure. So, I'm looking and looking, and I pick something, but then it's, something's not right, something's, something's not working just right. Alright, print file name shown below. Test model. I don't know which one's the test model. Alright, so uh, the white filament is not pushing through and I'm pretty sure it's not as obvious as the red because the red has good contrast. So I need to try to get that white film going. And also keep those wires away from the belt. Pretty sure it needs to get up to 260 degrees or somewhere close. Bed, 35 degrees Celsius. motor isn't even working right. It's not moving. It's 
the motor's not feeding. backwards like it should it's just not feeding forwards like it should all right I got the I retracted the white and then I reinserted it and now it fed correctly I don't know what I don't know what happened with the motor but it was clicking the first time I tried to insert it. I should have realized that was a problem, but because it's supposed to move real smoothly. But, but we got it now. So let's do the test print. The, instead of the dual layer, the, just the, the regular test print. Well, actually, the dual layer will, will be a test print anyway, so might as well do that. Now we I'm using the the filament evenly. So now now the the heads the print heads have to reheat so it's gonna take a little while for that to happen. Okay the filament's up to here. It's it's white and white, so it's really hard to see this. You know, with the flashlight, I can see the end of it a lot easier. The red one is very obvious. Looks like the right one is uh, heating up faster than the than the left one. I think it was the other way around earlier, not by much. And the print bed is already heated, 36, 35 degrees Celsius. I can actually feel the heat. Not very hot. I, I'm sure if I touch it, it'd probably be might uh, be a little un, uh, discomforting. Plus, I don't want to touch it and get my greasy fingers all over. Actually, I think I see some grease spots from handling it. Right in here, right over here, right over here. Normally, uh, they say put a little glue stick on Put a little glue stick on to keep it from actually sticking on to the, the thing. Maybe I should do that right now while it's heating. See how that works. That came, the glue stick came with the, the we do. Or we do. We do. Okay. 
but we're up to 230. Now they're even, more or less. I didn't. I don't think we got more than 235 or so. So it should start pretty soon here. any filament coming out. The wheel is, the gear is turning, feeding, just hasn't come out yet. It's just, it was way back here, so it's going to take a while for it to go. It's a very slow feeder, so I'm wondering, maybe I should have fed it all the way through. Okay, I think so. Because it's supposed to be doing something, and it's uh, not. Okay, let's try this again. I need to feed it all the way in through till it uh, comes out a little. Let's quit this. And we're going to have to wait for it to... Okay, I'm going to pause it and, and get back to where I'm going to... Force feed it all the way down, in, and then I'll start you off when it's almost ready to print. So I just finished doing the white filament, and it took about three uh, tries on here. It's a little easier to see it on the red. I had to use the flashlight to see where it was, and it, I had to go through it twice. On the red, it's a little easier to see what's going on. So, we'll follow this along. I don't know if you can see it in your, in your thing, in the camera. See if I can zoom in on that. Currently, the filament's right here. It's very slow. Hopefully, you can see the contrast. I can show you the contrast here. So it looks like it stopped. Okay. So I fed it once. This is the second time, and so now it's the third time. And that should get it all the way inside to the print head. So that when it goes to print, it will already be right up against, ready to be heated and go in. So currently it's right, right here. Oh, what happened? Stop. Oh, did I retract it? I might have retracted it. Right. Keep going. Okay, it's going now. Okay, now it's right here. I don't know what happened. I'm maybe, maybe uh, jiggling the. It does have a sensor to know when you run out of filament. So I might have accidentally triggered that. Oh, it stopped. No, it's still going. Right about here. Okay, now it stopped. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to do it four times. I must have accidentally retracted it. Okay, is it going? Not yet. There it goes. 
but it only wants to feed when it's, there's a certain amount of heat going on here. Because it doesn't want to accidentally try to push the filament through cold into a cold head because it it goes from 1.75 to 0.3 or 0.4 yeah um, millimeters okay so it's it's in so that we should be good now let's try it again okay well it's gonna have to reheat again Although this one's already worn. Oh, because I just did the print thing. So, uh, the filament. The filament feed. some of this plastic. Okay, what's the temperature? At? Oh, pretty low. Didn't take a while. Okay, I'm gonna pause it until the temperature gets back up and I'll lower the, oh, I forgot. I'll lower the, the camera or widen out here. Okay, so I'm gonna pause it here until it gets up to temperature. Okay, we're back. Close to print time now. Okay, I figured out this this is just an adapter for the TF card. And so I can download stuff from the computer and put it on the card. And in the card I just insert the print file. It's going to take a little bit of time for the stuff to come out you know, since it wasn't all the way in. Hopefully, not too much. There it goes. Now, according to uh, the screen here, it says that it's going to take about 14 minutes. It says four minutes, but I forgot what the first one, four minutes and 14. I think the four minutes is the, the preheat pre um, time. Oh no, oh I see, it's counting down. Okay, 14 minutes total, but now it's counting down from 14. We're counting up, counting up, uh, and the 14 is counting down. So the first one is total time, second one is print time counting down. So this part I'll speed up so that you don't have to witness everything that's going on and uh, you'll get the gist. Yeah, I'm sure I'm pretty sure you've seen many uh, 
3D printing videos before where they show you a speed up uh, video of the whole thing because it's kind of boring. It's like watching water boil. Gives me the option to print again. I think I'll quit. Definitely the smell of plastic is obvious, but as you can see, the overall operation of this machine is fairly quiet, other than you hear the fan more than the motors. There's some 3D printers where you hear the sounds of the the printer itself, the motors, make you all kinds of squeals. So it's pretty, this one's pretty nice. They do include a spatula. They do include a spatula with the printer, so there we go. a little higher up, I think. There you go. Be careful with sharp. Be careful with sharp edges. Well, I don't know if that's that sharp. I think I can sharpen it a little bit more. This is really small, so I'm not going to be able to get too much of a pop off. On a bigger printout, it'll be easier, or something that's long, it's easier to pop off the print. So this, this bed is already full to the touch. Okay, well I'll show you how this bed comes off. Piece of metal. It's, it's, you know, this isn't going to pop off because it's so so small. So, barely. This is what ended printing up. Get out of here. Go. This outside ring is not the actual print. That's just, it's called the upper, I, I forgot the exact term, but it's the shell uh, to help get a cleaner print. Uh, off of the 3D printer. Yes. 
Except they're off, it's gonna be. You're gonna flip the, the glue. Turn the powder you can actually glue. So what that powder is, is the glue. Mm -hmm. I think my little razor blade uh, thing will catch underneath it better than that. Let me go get it. I'll be back. All right, so this is a little cheap razor blade scraper that you can buy at the dollar store. Uh, it's got to come in packets of two. In any case, they're only a dollar. And catch underneath the edge a lot easier than that big scraper. Yep. Breaks that seal a lot easier than that big edge on that scraper. So this is what they call the dual layer uh, test. So like I said, the outside, oh, how do I pop off that outside? It's pretty tough. So I didn't even have to cut it off. But anyway, wow, the edges look pretty smooth. I don't know, you could feel the layers on there with the nail, see? Yeah, you can, you can hear those suckers. Um, not exactly sure, but it printed, and it printed, so it, it might need some fine tuning that I'm not aware of. Uh, oh yeah, because you gotta make sure that the layers aren't offset too much. From one side. Well, let me take it out. Anyway, so able to take this outer piece off. Let me use that on. Oh, there we go. The rest of it's starting to pop off now. There we go. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot. Just that outer ring was preventing me from getting a good grip on it. So, anyways, this is what the, the bottom of it looks like. The sides, are they perfectly vertical or are, they, or are the layers offset a little bit? They look good enough to me. Oh, there's a little bit of offset on that bottom one, on this side. This one's indented a little bit here. That red one, or the white one on the bottom sticking out this way. But it's smooth on the other side, fairly smooth. I can feel, you know, a little bit of uh, between the, one layer to the next. 
This one, I only feel it on that last layer. There's a little ledge there. All right. Well, that's my first test print. And uh, I think that's pretty successful. You know, I didn't totally read. The instructions are just one page. And they don't, they're not highly detailed. Okay, the other page that they give you is how to connect it to your computer or how to connect the camera, the Wi-Fi camera, to your phone. You use a, an app for that. So this is it. Then one side is just an introduction, customer service, the package contents, uh, an overall picture with uh, everything numbered. And then the other side is putting it together without any words, just the just, uh, pictures uh, showing you the bolts. And yeah, I guess you gotta be pretty, pretty, uh, keep an eye on, not to keep, keep an eye on the size of the bolts that you have to use and see that some are larger than others. And then this is just setting up the, the not setting up, but um, leveling the bed. Uh, and doing the Z offset and fill, feeding the filament. And then this part, it says to do a print test, print, a print test, but they don't actually tell you which file to actually print out. So one has to assume it's the first one, but I figured, well, you know, I have to check and see about the, the layers anyway. So I might as well do the dual layer uh, test. So, and it looks really good. So I'm really happy. Uh, I was kind of worried about the filament feed, the clicking noise that this motor was doing or the, the gear was doing at the beginning. I thought maybe that was totally put. But when I pulled up, when I uh, retracted the filament and then refed, refed it back in, no problem at all. I, it is just uh, uh, some kind of weird um, failure there either I pushed it in too hard or or it just didn't catch right. Uh, overall, I'm really happy with what I with this wheel. So um, this I got it through a Kickstarter from Wido. Um, I was pretty sure that they would come through on the project. There's been a few 3D print uh, projects on Kickstarter that totally failed uh, or, or just nominal success. Um, the reason I, I was really um, uh, ready to uh, invest on this through Kickstarter was Weedo had, had other products already uh, in production and that they were selling normally so they they are an unestablished company same thing with my kudo bean uh, that was an established company that already had a product that they were selling and they were essentially doing was making a, a smaller version of their of their normal product line so um, that's one of the things I look for uh, when kickstarting a an electronic or something this expensive, um, so but uh, I'm really happy with what I have here. So I'm hoping to get get something started and do some interesting prints with this.